Phil in England writes to me and he says, Hi, Paul. I have your excellent loudspeaker book, The Audiophile's Guide, and the accompanying Octave Records tracks for speaker setup. Good work, sir. I have followed through many times, now making minor adjustments which have significantly improved the overall sound. However, no matter what I try or what I change in the sound stage, which goes from speaker to speaker and provides greater depth, I never get any height information. It remains about waist high. What would you suggest? Well, thanks, Phil, and I appreciate you getting the audiophile's guide. It's a it's helped so many people, and it's, 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 been a, it's been a fun book to have written and to answer a lot of questions for, so thank you for that. Well, height is an interesting challenge. First off, let's talk about how does a loudspeaker or how does a recording capture height? Think about that for a moment. If you have a stereo microphone, let's just say two stereo microphones, and I'm talking, and like you, you can see when it plays back, it's pretty easy. My voice goes to the left, or it goes to the right, your left, my right, whatever. Uh, and that's pretty easy, because it's going to get louder in the left speaker, it's going to get louder in the right speaker. And if I talk directly into the microphone, it's going to come equally out of both speakers, and therefore, it'll be in that phantom center channel. Pretty easy to understand. If I step away from the microphone, then I start picking up some of the room, and it sounds like I have depth, and that's how we get depth. And if you take the audiophile's guide, the book, and the, and the Octave Records um, CD or SACD along with it, you'll you'll learn how to maximize all of that so that on a great recording, you can get all of that. But what about depth? If, if the microphones are here and I come down like this or I go up like this, how in the hell is it going to do anything about that, right? How would, how would a pair of speakers that have information from left and right get depth, uh, uh, height or you know information, right? I thought a lot about this, and I'm sure there are acousticians who know a lot more than I do about it, but here's what I've kind of discovered. Boundary effects. So when I am speaking, and if I am at height, just normal standing height like I am right now, the speaker will produce, depending on how you have them set up, about what he is describing, normal height. Now, if it's on a good recording, and we have good microphones, not, not all recordings, most recordings don't have any height information, which may be part of the problem, but you do have the Octave Records one, so we'll talk about that in a sec. But as I come to a seating position, as I get lower here, you can probably hear that on this microphone, the little stupid thing I have on my thing. See how it gets a little, I get closer to the floor and the boundary changes. And so, and, and as I move up, my voice changes and as I get higher, etc. So boundary conditions on a proper recording subtly tell us where the seating or standing position is. And that's one of the big clues. And we can pick that up in a, in a stereo recording. So those boundary conditions have a lot to do with that. For your purposes, if you have an Octave Records recording that has good proper height information, as it should, then you might try the tilt back, tilt forward trick, okay? Given, now this, hap this works if you have your speakers away from the wall, enough like as, as in the book, and you have proper depth by tilting them back and forward, you can change the height information. Also, be aware that, I'm trying to think of what recording, so you have the Audiophiles Guide recording. Every single recording on that, except for Miguel Espinoza, 
the person was standing. So do, if, I don't know if you have the audio files guide, the loudspeaker or the stereo. If you have the loudspeaker, Gabe Mervine, all those tracks on there, they were all standing. So that should, if you tilt them back and, and forward a little bit, you should get it to where the trumpet, everybody is standing. I think it was Miguel Espinoza on that, that he was seating, he was seated, and he was playing the guitar uh, acoustically quite a bit lower to the floor. So that one, you should get some lower information. And I think you're gonna, if, if you have that record. So try that, and then try tilting them back and forward to see what happens. And that puts you more or less on axis. It might be part, partly the room, so anyway. A lot of babbling, <laughs> rambling and babbling. So thanks for the question. And, and let me know how it goes. Let me know if that helps. And if not, we'll come up with some more stuff for you. All right. Thanks.